Welcome to Dollars and Cents, hosted by Sanjeev Gupta, CPA. Dollars and Cents is the show about growing more of what you are making, saving more of what you are growing, and making more of what you are growing and saving in the most sensible and tax-efficient manner possible. Feel free to call into our studio number to be live on air with your questions. Call 408-912-5038. That's 408-912-5038. And here is your host of Dollars and Cents, Sanjeev Gupta, CPA. Good evening, friends. This is your own CPA, Sanjeev Gupta, CPA. I, I'm doing this show for last... Uh, I think uh, about nine to 10 months, uh, roughly. And I've discussed a lot of topics on air, which are very interesting from tax point of view, which impacts each and everyone's bottom line when it comes to saving taxes in the most, uh, tax, and, uh, most tax and financial efficient manner. The whole goal behind the show is to provide information in a, in a way that can help the listeners to go to learn the taxes to learn the financial angle in a way that can take and modify their thinking process when it comes to money. So that's why the show name is Dollar and Cents. Today I'm going to talk about an important topic which always comes across every time is whether I should continue working on 1099 or whether I should form a corporation. It's an important topic, important discussion. We'll cover in our dollar topic of the show. In our dollar update today, I'm going to talk about the changes that IRS has done on the website. They launched two new online tools to help the taxpayers manage and monitor the advanced monthly payments of the child tax credit. This is advanced child tax credit, which was part of the uh, American Rescue Plan Act, ARP. So if you are a married couple and your income levels is less than $150,000 for 2020, if you have not filed 2020 based on 2019, if your income level is less than $150,000, you can use this tool, which is there on the irs.gov website. And it's going to, well, they're saying it's going to start being on July 15th, they are giving you two online tools. There's number one is you can un enroll from advanced payment. That means you can opt out of receiving the advanced payment credit. And you can, the second tool which says, is, is says giving an advanced child tax credit eligibility assistant. You have to answer some questions. And if you, if you are, if you're able to answer all those questions, you, you can you qualify for child tax credit. Remember the child tax credit, advanced child tax credit is meant for a married couple less than making less than $150,000 or single making less than $75,000. Uh, how much credit we are getting? Well, if the kid age is up to six years, they're getting $3,600 per kid. And if the kid's age is from seven to 18, it's about $3,000 per kid. That's a big money we're talking about. And they're giving 50% of that credit in advance, 50% of the advance paid monthly. Well, this is great news for many taxpayers, but the downside is here, the taxpayers who receive the advance amount for which they are not eligible, maybe they made some mistakes, they do not in, uh, include a lot of other income, which, like for example, the K-1 income or the capital gains, which pushes up their income level beyond $150,000, but they do not include those. And they went on the website, answered the question uh, based on their the estimation and other things, and 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 got those payments 50 percent they have to repay those advances when they file their 2021 return that's why we recommend that the clients select the first tool to unenroll from the advance payment don't get the advance payment of uh, uh, child tax credit even if you're qualified what you should do in this case is should reduce your withholding of taxes on your w2 income or if you're paying estimate taxes, you can reduce that estimate tax payments based on the qualification for child tax credit. Now, child tax credit is given only for dependents claimed on your return, and those dependents must be living with you in your household. Now, 
who qualifies for dependent it can be your uh, son daughter siblings uh, nephews uh, unmarried people who are dependent on on you so all these are important things to be considered and if you are have those things go for it but remember like i said don't use that un, uh, don't enroll for advance payment you can always reduce your withholding of taxes this is sanjeevta cpa giving you tips on dollars and cents show listeners if you have any questions about tax about related to capital gains about changes in the tax rules for this year if you're running a business have questions about 179 have question about foreign income deductions qbi deductions is your time to connect with me on air the studio lines are open studio number is 408-912-5038 408-912-5038 apps uh, my firm sanjeevta cpa has offices in fremont sunnyville and pleasanton and we have a team of experienced chartered accountants cpas and eas who have over a period of time have helped lot of clients in filing their tax returns in its most satisfactory and tax efficient manner and we make sure that at the end everything is covered on the taxes and we are responsible for something goes wrong on the tax returns so we are our team is very conversant with indian tax rules and regulations and lot of things are happening in india by the way a uh, lot of uh, because of covid scenarios there are so many debt are being reported there now people are in a buy in a selling frenzy means they want to sell properties out there they want to close their bank accounts out there they want to get their money out from there so it's going to be a year where people are trying to move all this wealth from there maybe they they want to have their parents from there to come here they are going to sponsor green card or they want the uh, the parents on green card to be sponsor for citizenship there's a whole lot of discussion to be done when it comes to state tax planning for those for them and also one issue that always comes into our mind when we do that is a medical how to provide medical benefits for them without going through unnecessary lying on application which is important uh, uh, things to consider here myself not only a cpa but also an experienced chartered accountant having practiced in india for more than 12 years before coming to us uh and we have dealt with all kinds of complexities in my firm so listeners if you have any questions this is a time to connect with me on air studio lines are open studio number is 408 912 5038 408 912 5038 we are we have we have this one weekend last weekend where people were going out to travel i have seen this i went out myself out for travel and see cars and cars and hats and hats going out on vacations on the on the beaches on on uh, other course like golf course anything you name it all people you can see people out there so at the same, we we just want to we have to be cautious about our health as well as other people health so we have to really be careful in dealing with people and taking all precautions so that we don't spread this covid we don't we should not think that the covid is behind our back covid is still there different variants are coming in you must have heard about delta variant so just be careful on that account my website is sanjeevcpa.com that is spelled as s a n j i v sanjeevcpa.com you can find a lot of valuable information about all the things that is happening around you relating to taxes useful videos in fact i i do uh, have my radio shows uh, uh, like uh, written down on on the website so that you can also go to it if you missed this uh, or did not hear it did not hear the full show so the studio lines are open uh, uh, you can always call the studio number 408-912-5038 so let's dive into our dollar topic of the show which is about 1099 versus s corporation now you must be wondering what is what do you mean by 1099 well 1099 is a is it is a kind of a, a situation where you want to work without getting the payment for taxes means without taking taxes out from your income the check comes to you directly no tax is withheld on that one think about that no taxes if you pay no taxes you'll get so much income right so uh, but that is not only the criteria there you have to pay taxes there's no way you can avoid paying taxes but think like this you get a w2 uh, you get a paycheck with no taxes taken out no federal tax withholding no no uh, california tax withholding no social security taxes no medicare taxes 
think about how much that money will be in your hands. That is what do you mean? What is meant by 1099 means you get the payment for the services you rendered in your in your bank account. It can be in your in your directly into your bank or by a check, and use that money for paying expenses. We will talk about what type of expenses, but you use that money for paying expenses, and then you then you do estimation of taxes on that income minus the expenses, and that's how what you pay to the government. If you are in W two, the checks the taxes are taken out at source from your paycheck, and then you do expenses after tax with after tax money. This is before tax money. That's what 1099 is. 1099 is, is you are no longer an employee of a company. You're working as independent contractor. And we are, when you're working as an independent contractor, you have to be aware of certain things. Like, for example, you should have a liability insurance for your business. Well, you can say business or you can do a consulting your own or you can do kind of a, a setup, business setup. We'll talk about that. Uh, so you have to have a business liability insurance. You have to have a workers comp if you're hiring employees, of course. And uh, of course, you need to provide other benefits, other things that you have to be care of, careful of. Like you need to open a bank account. You need to register with the city in which you are working, providing the services. So, and you have to give, you have to get a contractual agreement with the uh, employer that is uh, employing you on 1099. And also you need to uh, raise invoices for the services you're rendering, rendering on a monthly basis and get paid on that account. So this is 1099, you need to, uh, need to issue, you need to get, you need to issue a 1099, a W9 form to the employer as well. So this is what the 1099 is. You have to be careful about the AB5 rule, California AB5, which is, which has been uh, mandatory in, uh, in regulations since to th this, this, this since this year. So this is all about uh, controlling factor, timing factor, and and also the hourly factors uh, like uh, the control factor, the tools factor of how if you're using the tools, the services you're providing under the supervision or control of the person under whom you're pro for whom you're providing services for. So. So that's 1099. What about S corporation? S corporation is a corporation, means it's a entity which is different from the shareholders who form this company as a separate distinct entity from the shareholder. So the corporation is a, a, a setup where where the view you say I, I am owner of this corporation, I'm I'm taking a stock of that company. Uh, ownership in the form of stock of a company and uh, the company makes money and what my company makes money with company has expenses company has expenses not personal expenses company has expenses for getting that co company income and then wh whatever net income is it flows on a k1 that k1 is a is a way to transfer the profit from the company account to personal account uh, that's that's done through k1 so that is s corporation by default you don't make S corporation by default it is C corporation which is a regular corporation um, to make it S corporation uh, you have to file certain forms like form 2553 with IRS make sure that you do that a lot of people forget about it a lot of people make mistakes on this one they think uh, they are S corporation when they incorporate their business they when they do the incorporation online they say i want to form S corporation but they forgot that they have to send a separate form to the irs which the online companies does not do it unless you you uh, you are aware of it so that's a lot of time we find this mistake a lot when they when they come and start filing when they come to us and we start filing returns for them they come we look at it do you got this form 2553 or a letter from the IRS saying that they accepted their as corporation elections and and we know they don't have it most of the times they don't so we have to go back and apply for as corporation there's a process to be uh, this process there there's some revenue procedure we follow for late filings and other things the IRS in most cases grant it for late filings but um, in certain cases they don't so that's what S corporation is. That S corporation is like any other corporation with a special S clause chapter, uh, which is part of IRS subchapter S of the code. So when you when we look at 1099 and when we look at S corporation, the question uh, we have to look at the differences among them. 
first difference that it comes is about the period. When I say period, that means whether one should work on tenant in forever or one should bench one should form as corporation. So if you're not sure that you're going to work on tenant in for a long time, don't form as corporation. Reason? Because you don't want to have expenses for incorporating that business and running the business in a corporation way means you have to maintain the minutes, you have to run, you have to do the incorporation, you have to do the tax provision fee for the corporation. Uh, you have to maintain separate books of account, you have to maintain separate bank account, and you have to maintain uh, receipts and other things which are important for us corporation. So this, this, all these effort requires time and money, cost money. You need to hire CPAs to do their payroll and other, running other things. So if you're not in that mood, you're not sure uh, about the contract that you just got and not sure whether that contract will go for another two years, I would suggest not to form as corporation, just continue working on 1019, which is a simple way of working on 1099s. You just have to, uh, like I said, you have to give a 10 w 9 and contractual agreement invoicing, and you just have to inform the city in which you are which you are working that hey, I'm working as a 1099. I need to get a permit. So that's that's the simplest way. If you want to set up as a business and don't want your name to be known or want your business name to be known, then you can do a business uh, doing business as or fictitious name that we call the fictitious name. So if you go out and you see subways and um, and, uh, and other uh, franchise stores, those those are the name, business name. The entities are, the entity name are different holding those franchise names. So if you want your name to be popular like that one, so you have to form a fictitious name application. You have to do a fictitious name with your city and county. You have to go with the county name, county, and register the city, register the DBA name, and then go to the city and register the fictitious name, and then go to the bank and open a bank account. So that's how we do on 1099s. If you want, just want to do, just want to do simple, I will say keep it simple as long as you want to continue working on that one, not sure how much, uh, how, how long the contract will be, and just want to make some uh, make money and put some expenses into it, yes, do 1099, don't do DBA, not even as corporation. But if you think that the contract is going to last for at least two years or more, don't waste your uh, money on 1099s. Try to convert that to as corporation as soon as possible because as corporation save taxes much better than 1099. We're going to discuss that as well. In the meantime, listeners, if you have any questions, this is a time to connect with me. This is Sanjeev Gupta, CPA on air. Uh, the studio lines are open and the studio number here is 408-912-5038. 408-912-5038. In our dollars and cents show today, we are talking about differences between 1099 and S Corporation. Uh, a very important topic. So any difference that comes with that is liability protection. So if you are at 1099, 1099 means I'm working for somebody. So I have unlimited liability because I'm working for, I'm providing service. It's not, I am not distinct from myself. But in case of S corporation, like I said, corporation is a separate distinct entity from the shareholders. So definitely that provides protection uh, to the shareholder of the company. So liability protection is there in case of S corporation, whereas in case of 1099, it's not there. So if you're doing some kind of a job, which involves a lot of liability, then do S corporation. For example, if you're doing construction, I would suggest to form an S corporation, right? Rather than continue doing working on 1099 because you might get hurt or you might do something which might hurt somebody else. Liability is huge. And then people come back and I tell me this, this thing, hey, I have a liability protection. I have all those insurances. But have you ever read the, 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 the little lines at the end of the uh, contract that or the liability insurance contract that says they will not cover any negligence or any act of God? So, and, and we have seen that from our experience, past experiences, when things have uh, gone, uh, there's, there's cyclone, there's thunderstorm, there's so much, there is other thing that happened um, uh, that, that brought destruction to the properties. 
and how many of insurance how much how, how many insurance company have paid the the liability is so like i have not seen i have seen not many companies doing that so just be careful on that account uh, don't get uh, taken out that i have a liability protection but you have to read the fine lines fine prints on that liability contracts so that you uh, need to make sure that you are covered but for in case of as corporation of course you have to have a business liability insurance but you that's a second uh, second thing that second protection that you get uh, so it's, you have to have a liability plus the corporation also provides a benefit so uh, it's not it's a corporate will that provides the protection we have a, a caller here let me take this call we are call, coming to close let me take this call caller here good evening mr sanjeev gupta cpa uh hello sanjeev uh, i was listening to a radio show uh, okay. i had a question regarding uh, uh, llc stuff so yes, i have a right. ca registered llc and uh, it is like tax pass through um, hmm? not like a corp tax as uh, c corp or s corp it tax as llc um, so i'm just wondering like what would be the best approach because if i have to move the headquarters to a different state um maybe texas or florida what would mm-hmm. be the options and what is the best way to do so make it uh, so that would in ca or or make uh, you know close down and start something in different state and then uh um do the business in in other state so are you going to be are you a california resident which you, which you are you thinking of moving over to another state moving to other state Yes, yes. So, if you already have an LLC in the state in which you are residing now, it's better to close that LLC and form a new LLC in another state. Moving this LLC from one state to another state takes a lot of time and complications arises because you need to get good standing certificate. And one state to another state takes uh, takes a lot of time, and their processes are not very. Uh, very simple so i would suggest it's very easy to form the company or uh, to dissolve the company in one state and you can apply and see whether you get the same name in another state if that happens you don't have to change the yen number yen number remains the same because federal uh, does not does not care about the state uh, which state you are forming so yen number remains the same with the same name and you can apply for change of address with the irs but at the same time you can form a new company with the same name if available in another state okay oh, okay or can i can i start a different company and merge this yeah, like as a... yeah you can form you can form a different company and take over the existing company with the assets thank you sir we are coming to very close of the show uh, i will uh, I'll definitely just want to say uh, thank you to all the listeners who have been uh listening to my shows for so many months um, I, f- i will take this differences between tenant and as corporation again in my next show which is happening on this on next wednesday same time 6:30 am 6:30 pm to 7 pm see you see you all and keep uh, keep care, keep uh, doing what you are doing but just we just watch that uh, covid is still there just keep in that in mind thank you